If anybody doubts us, it has not war in. It's a museum now, bunkers underneath the building to your left at the far end. This is our spot for that also. Anybody out at the moment? White hill with us? Cabinet war rooms, bunkers with the Winston Churchill Potter and County taking defense of World War II. Maybe it's not still, thanks. In the centre of the road ahead of us, there is a stone monument with flags on the side of it called the Scimitar. It means empty tomb. It represents the tombs of our armed forces here around the world. Almost immediately to the left hand side is the Black Gate, the entrance to the Palm Street. Far from Palm Street is the last big building, probably the scaffolding. It is number 10 Down Street, where our Prime Minister. Yes, we had to walk Gordon Brown lives. Traditionally, since the 1700s, the first Prime Minister lived in there, and they have generally lived in there ever since, not always, but generally. Over to your right hand side is a stone building near the tree out the front. This is the only surviving part of the palace of Whitehall, which concerns the banking house. It dates back to 1622, but in the 1500s, Henry VIII had a palace. The Palace of Whitehall are almost running the entire length of the street. It's the reason the street gets its name from the palace. It's outside these front windows on the first floor that at 2 pm on the 30th of January 1649, King Charles I was executed. And he became a republic for 11 years until they really set in monarchy. Down to your left hand side, you have the horse cart or a horse cart of the way. And you have the blue mirror and the dark blue coat. Trafalgar in 1805, a naval battle off the south coast of Spain. He was up against the French and Spanish naval fleets combined together, the Napoleonic naval fleets. He managed to largely destroy the French and Spanish naval fleets, which is a major victory at the time it ended the naval battles in the Napoleonic Wars. So Nelson led the Battle of Trafalgar, he won the Battle of Trafalgar. But he was seen by a French sniper there, or maybe this had been a lucky shot. He was shot in the chest and he died three hours later. He was well enough to hear that he'd won the Battle of Trafalgar. They say his last words were, thank God I have done my duty. He believed that in fighting for his king and his country, even if it meant sacrificing his If you look up to his statue, you can see the sleeve of his right arm pinned to his chest. He lost an arm due to injury in his career, early in his career. He lost some of the sight in one of his eyes earlier in his career as well. He couldn't seem to save his life and he suffered quite badly from seasickness. And yet he didn't retire, went off to the Battle of Trafalgar and lost his life there. Instead of burying him at sea, which they would have done in those days, his men decided to bring his body back here to London to bury him as a national hero no, at so home. And he's buried in the crypt oh, wow. of St. Like Paul's Cathedral. At this point of the I tour, we are going to Trafalgar Square near the National Gallery. It's, it's a place to walk up to Piccadilly yeah. Circus, a short walk up to left. And then this bus is going to head out to the east side of London. If you're watching the maps at all, that's out to the right hand side of your map. That's called Covent Garden Market. St Paul's Cathedral, where Nelson was buried in the crypt, to, uh, London Bridge, the London Dungeon, Tower Bridge, the Tower of London, where the Tower Pier is for the food of the boat crews, then off to the Tate Modern Art Gallery, the replica of the Globe yeah. Theatre, and then back up Victoria Embankment to this part of London once more. It takes us over an hour to go out into the east side. If you look out to your left hand side, you can see the Admiralty Archer, which takes you down to the front of Buckingham Palace. Over to your right hand side, you can see the Canada the House, it's not the Canadian High Commission, it has the flag of the Canadian Province of New Territory, they're on the side of it. They have the cultural exhibition inside, but the main part of the Canadian High Commission is up in Grosvenor Square in Mayfair. We're going to go up to the far side of Canada House, we're going to make a small loop 
to make our stop for the National Gallery in Trafalgar Square. So if anybody would like to hop out there and walk around uh, for the Trafalgar Square Festival that's taking place here, you can see the TV screen on the other side of Nelson's Column. They have a live telecast of the Beijing Olympic Games taking place. You'll be able to do so at that stop. Also, if anybody wants the red route bus, it has the red triangle on the front and it has commentaries in English, French, Italian, Spanish, German, Russian, Japanese and kids commentary. You could change onto that one, transfer onto that one at the stop that we're going to make just around the corner. If anybody wants discounted theatre tickets or further tour tickets, you could buy them from our visitors centre, which is down to your left hand side. The changing of the guard walk leaves from there at 10 30 in the morning. And at 1 o'clock the crew of the walk as well. Underneath the trees ahead of us here to your right hand side is a statue of a man on a horse, King George III. He was the last King of England to rule over the United States of America. He lost the United States in the War of Independence in 1776. Also over your shoulders to the right hand side, we have the Texas Embassy Restaurant and Grill inside Ocean Park. If you look up to the wall of it, it says Ocean Park. In 1912, the White Star Shipping Line Company were here and they sold tickets to the maiden voyage of the largest ship that was ever built, in her time anyway. She was due to head off to the United States of America via Southampton and then Ireland as well. They were dropping people off and picking people up and heading over there. Newspapers thought that this great big ship was unsinkable. Some newspapers claimed that God couldn't sink her. It was the Titanic. God didn't mean to sink her. It was rather a big deal though. It was an iceberg, but it rather quick though. There's meant to be enough lifeboats for everybody, but somebody th thought that ruined the look of the design and the views of the first class passengers and got some red ink and crossed half of them out. Approximately 1,500 people lost their lives when she sank. It was the first time they used the SOS, Save Our Soul Signal, in Morse code from the Titanic. You can imagine this building here with that company inside. There's a line out the door around the corner around the block. Tickets for the Titanic was so popular. In more recent years, they've had the Rugby uh, Federation inside the building there. This is where they drew up the rules for rugby. But these days, the Texas Embassy Restaurant and Grill, uh, you go inside and have something to eat there instead. Up to your right hand side, there's a tall glass and cement building, New Zealand House. If you turn up to the right hand side of it, one minute up the hill, you'll find Piccadilly Circus if you'd like to head up there. Over to your left hand side, we see the red sign for the National Gallery that says admission is free. If you turn up that street to your left hand side, Whitcomb Street, just up near McDonald's, you're going to find Leicester Square, which is the home of our nightlife, and our entertainment district as well. We'll be coming around the corner here to pull in our bus bays. We'll pick up the service Leicester Square if you'd like to walk up to them. Also, the National Gallery in Chicago Square ahead of us. Again, if anybody's out for the red route bus that from here heads out to the east yeah, side of London, you can stop here for it if you'd like to. Or if you'd like to catch a westbound yellow route bus, as we're now heading out to the east. Is there anybody out for the stop currently?